Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues today. We find ourselves in Princeton, New Jersey, where the announcement's been made by the head coach there, Chris Ayers, that uh, two guys would be uh, promoted for their job well done, as it were, in a continuation of that effort. And uh, uh, both, uh, both Sean Gray and Joe Dubuque have been elevated to associate head coach. We start this interview process with one of the two. And he is Sean Gray. Sean, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Scott. Doing very well. Thanks so much for uh, having me on today. Congratulations, my friend. Um, it's been a while since you've been an associate head coach, as you left Boston as the associate head coach there with Carl Adams. Uh, you headed to Princeton with an idea of helping put Princeton back on the map. And boy, what a season you had just last year. Talk and reflect a little bit about last year and some of the high points. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, we've we put good detailed uh, training plans in place. And, um, you know, obviously our recruiting has been outstanding. I think it's been five consecutive top 25 recruiting classes. So we've been steadily building there and getting a lot better there and, and bringing in just super talented uh, wrestlers who are, you know, obviously brilliant student athletes. And uh, each year we, you know, we, we try to tweak the training plan um, just to keep trying to keep things fresh, but make things better and better. And we, we, where we were pretty young, uh, early on, we had just a great group of seasoned veterans of uh, the senior class with Brett Harner, Ray O'Donnell and Jordan Laster. They were kind of the trailblazers of the program and, um, really kind of set, you know, they sent them set the mentality and changed the culture of the program. Like, Hey, we could be one of the best programs in the country. So with, with the good, you know, the good recruiting classes that we've had and excellent leadership from those guys. Um, and, you know, working diligently on that training plan. Um, I think things really came together. What I saw with the team at the end of the year was that, you know, we, we had been in big time matches before we were confident. We acted like we had been there before. And, you know, I got goosebumps right now thinking about it. And we're, you know, at the end of the year, we're thinking like, wow, we should, we should get at least five guys to the nationals, but you know, we could get more than that. If, uh, if we get real hot and wrestle well and things just came together and, you know, we set a school record, seven guys to, to the NCAA championship. So I think it was a culmination of all those things coming together and, uh, you know, just, just a team feeding off each other with, with, with momentum and uh, really, really came together at the end. It was really exciting. You celebrated the sport, I think, which is perhaps uh, the greatest compliment anybody can, can uh, get. You celebrated the sport with an effort at perfection. Um, and I, I really like that description because, quite frankly, that's why we do it. That's why we get into the sport to have fun. And it was obvious your guys were having fun even while giving their very best in a very physical sport. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so that, that's the one thing I think that's great about our program. Um, we are so excited to come to work every day. And, uh, you know, we bust each other's chops and we shoot back and forth with the guys and we have a great time to keep it light. And, you know, when 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 practice starts or competition starts, it's like we're able to hone in and, uh, you know, just get the job done and do what we need to do. But it's it's great. Like I, I remember at the NCAA championships, uh, we so we picked up on um, on hacky sack this year as, as a team. And, uh, you know, Matthew Kolodzik and I and, and, and the other coaches, we would we would do a lot of hacky sack while cutting weight. And so at the, at the NCAAs, it's, uh, you know, it was, it was just so relaxed. We're having fun. And the guys from Wyoming actually came in and I think there was like seven of us or eight of us uh, between Princeton and Wyoming. And we were able to do like around the world and they got it on tape where everybody, you know, kicks it, the hacky sack around. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just fun things like that where we keep it light. And, um, you know, in, in the end, though, I think, you know, we do have a lot of fun, but it's it's also a lot of fun when you're seeing the results and winning, too. So, um so it's a great environment to be in right now. I don't think I've seen that video, the around the world and the exciting sport of hacky sack. I understand they are considering <laughs> adding hacky sack to the 2020 Olympic program. Uh, <laughs> as long as it doesn't take away any more slots from any more sports, then, then we can do that. Oh, I'm confident it will. <laughs> we're, we're talking with Sean Gray this morning. The news is out, of course, that he and, and Joe Dubuque have been uh, um, recognized for their efforts. Uh, with the uh, new titles of associate head coaches, and rightfully so. I thought that was a very generous effort by uh, Chris Ayers to, to uh, seek out those designations and the, and the benefits that come along with it. The promotion is more than just in title. It is 
a recognition of a job well done. Um, let's talk about one guy you, you mentioned. Uh, you brought him up first, Matthew Klodzik. I really enjoyed, first of all, talking to him, but I really enjoyed watching him wrestle. What makes Matthew Klodzik special in your eyes? I've never seen anyone more obsessed with his goals um, where, I mean, he'll, he, he is a uh, student of the sport. Um, he's, he's always looking to innovate, uh, reinvigorate different situations uh, on the mat. And I mean, there's times where he'll come in from like, you know, we joke, he'll come in for like a c- couple hours with like some tape of like, you know, it would be like the Bulgarian uh, county finals circa 1986. And, you know, sit there and I'll watch it, you know, in the office and, you know, want to come out and try situations. And uh, but it's how he conducts his business and his life. Um, he's very serious about what he wants to accomplish. His work ethic is outstanding. And, um, you know, he's, he's been an incredible example of, of, what it, of, of what it takes to, you know, get it all done. In the classroom, he's in engineering, which is one of the toughest majors here at Princeton at the number one university, you know, in the country. And, uh, you know, he's doing well there. And, and obviously he's doing extremely well on the mat. And, um, you know, I think he has worldly aspirations, too. I think his goal is to be an Olympic champ. So these are all little stepping stones along the way. And he holds himself, um, you know, just he holds himself in the highest regard. And, uh, you know, as far as what he needs to do. And he's just he's just very focused and serious. And, um, you know, it's it's he's an exciting individual to, to, to be around. And he's been great for our program. Matthew Klodzik is the young man we're talking about, mature beyond his years, and that perhaps is an accurate uh, description, uh, at least from my chair. Uh, top 25 class coming in uh, to the 2017-2018 season. The team will not deplete with graduation. As a matter of fact, it's only getting stronger, and that's the design. You guys are set to host the All-Star Classic this November, which uh, traditionally kicks off the college wrestling season. Um can you describe what that means to Princeton and the friends of Princeton wrestling? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's in my mind, I mean, it's, it's the, you know, the, the singular um, most prestigious event, you know, early in the season. I mean, you know, you're, you're selected to wrestle there. Um, I was fortunate enough to wrestle in, in that event twice. And it's, and it's just a special thing to, you know, to, to, to be around and be a part of. And the fact that we get to host it in Jadwin, which is the most historical wrestling venue in the state of New Jersey. Um, and there's a lot of history here. In fact, me growing up uh, just 10 minutes north of here in Flemington, my earliest memories are coming down to watch the Easterns at Princeton and college matches. And the NCAAs were held here twice. We've hosted the conference here, um, you know, twice in the last six years. So there's a lot of history in that gym. And to bring this prestigious event there is really exciting. There's a tremendous buzz uh, in our building, in our community and our WIBN network. And people are really rallying behind this thing because I can tell you that one, one thing about, you know, how we, how, how we kind of conduct our business with, with the program uh, and different events that we put on and, and the support we get from Princeton, we want to make it the absolute best we possibly can. And, uh, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to say like, it's going to be exciting. There's a lot of really neat things going on with it without giving too much away. But this is definitely an event that you do not want to miss and, uh, you know, if, travel around the country to get here because it's it, it's going to be an absolutely spectacular event. We're really excited about it. Where will people fly into for that event? So the nice thing about our location is, um, you know, we're, we're an hour from hour from Newark and New York City area and we're about 45 minutes from Philly. So it's it, to get in here, it's 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 pretty easy. I mean, Newark, you can fly in and hop on the train. It, it'll drop you off right on the Princeton campus. And, you know, um, from Philadelphia, it's, you know, it's about, you know, about a 40 minute, 45 minute drive. So, uh, so it's real easy to get in and get out of, uh, you know, if you're, if you're traveling from far. I love it. Of course, uh, you know, if you look back prior to your arrival, I think, uh, or prior to Chris's arrival anyway, uh, 10 years prior, uh, there was not a single wrestling event in the venue. Uh, we're talking, of course, about Jadwin. So the goals that he had established were get wrestling events in Jadwin and fill Jadwin for one of them. And uh, I think we can do it with the All-Star Classic. You've already met 
uh, one of the goals, and that was two conference championships and multiple dual meets there. Uh, Jadwin is the ultimate goal for wrestling, and it's a, a, a featured venue. So I think that's outstanding, outstanding. I want to congratulate you, Sean. Um, you've conducted yourself in our sport in, in such a way where others can look to you as an example. Congratulations to you, uh, to your family. Uh, and most of all, to the Princeton wrestling community. Obviously, they've wrapped their loving arms around you guys, and uh, you and Joe Dubuque have responded in such a way that, uh, well, you're an associate head coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's an honor, and, and I think you had, had mentioned this, too. I mean, it's, it just says a lot about Coach Ayers, uh, who he is as a person, um, and, and just what he's done here with the program has been um, – it's been incredible to be around. Uh, the exciting thing for me is, you know, I get to work with, you know, two other the best coaches in the country. We have so much fun, and um, you know, I can I can promise you this, Scott. The best the best things are right in front of us for this program, and uh, you know, we're going to keep climbing. So thank you very much. John Gray has been our guest on the Nike Hot Seat today. Of course, the news is out. The Princeton program recognizes the best for the efforts put in. Sean Gray and Joe Dubuque have been promoted to associate head coaches as the team enters the 2017 season. I'm Scott Casper from Takedown. Thanks for watching.